Alrighty, hi guys, I'm Dave Grinsel, and I'm gonna do a review of the uh, iOS Harry's Lap Timer Pro. Uh, the application that kind of gives you uh, a better idea of how you're doing at the track so you can keep track of your time and uh, uh, see what you're doing and get better at your skills. I think there's three different versions you get. I have the Grand Prix version, which is basically all the features that you can get within that um, application. And the reason why I got this application is I was trying to look around to see what there was for um, ways to kind of track your own time um, and just so you can see if you are getting better or not. I know there's a few different apps out there. Um, uh, Harry's Lab Timer kind of is the one that appealed to me the most with all the features that it has um, and just the usability of it. So I do a lot of autocrossing and once in a while rallycross and ice racing. So I don't really go on the um, bigger predefined tracks. I basically um, create my own track and then on points to record my times. Alrighty, so when you first open the application, they'll give you a splash screen and it gives you this guide view um, where you can kind of quickly get started. Um, the main thing that I use the most when I first um, do this is basically the autocross um, feature. Basically, um, it gives you the name, and you can obviously uh, rename it if you want. To create your own track, you can either walk the track with your iPhone or iPad or whatever you want to use, and you would start the or um, tag the in point and out point, and those basically tell you um, it tells Harry's lap timer to start recording here when he crosses this point and stop recording here when you cross that point. And if you're not able to go on the track, uh, sometimes I do parade laps, um, then you can be in your car, hit the end point when you go to the start, uh, and the finish point when you do that too. So basically, you go to where you want, you hit set, uh, it will give you if you want a standing start or starting line. Uh, standing start is when you are staging and you're still and you go. Uh, starting line is if you're doing laps and you continually keep going in that circle uh, most of the time I do standing start um, then you do the finish one and boom you're ready to go and you hit drive so basically that is the quick and easy ready to um, create some endpoints and outpoints points to get going so once you are ready and staged at the line you would hit stage um, then a start as soon as you start going, um, it will start recording the time and any other uh, data that you want to start recording. What I will do is I will kind of go through um, the features of this real quick. Um, I kind of changed the bottom of it here to suit my needs and you can obviously rearrange this if you want. I won't go too much into this um, these settings here. Um, these are uh, mostly personal preference and there's other various things. Um, there's a lot of stuff to go through if you want to read the documentation you can uh, go find it on Harry's Lab Timers website uh, definitely a great source of information and definitely the forums if you have any questions on that um, so again the first thing that pops up is this um, guide which you can define users which I have a use user already um, set up um, so this is this is the timer screen so it shows you um, your times when you um, complete a lap or do a heat or whatever. This is your map view um, where you can see your triggers um, so you can make uh, adjustments with that a little bit. It's useful for determining the um, direction that you want to go with that for the trigger points. The lap list gives you your lap list for that spe specified track um, so you can click on here and it'll give you information um, it's pretty neat video functionality so right now um, it's recording from my iPad which I have built into my dash right here um, and basically as soon as you cross that line I'll start recording get all your information another cool feature that I really like and what made me chose this application is the multicam functions so as you can see um, in this screen right here uh, it can record 
any iOS device or it has the capability to trigger and stop a GoPro if you wanted. Um, but as you can see this is the application on my phone right here and if you check it out you can kind of see the um, preview of the video. Um, so what it does is it records on this device uh, on your multicam device then once you're done it transfers all the video to the cloud um, then the cloud to your master device which syncs everything up. Uh, iPad or iPhone, um, the GPS's aren't the greatest for auto crossing. The reason why is those GPS's um, track every one second it takes a marker from the GPS. Now with the auto crossing and say rally crossing um, the tracks are very small and it's very fast so you really don't get the most accurate data with that. But I found that uh, it wouldn't trigger the video or wouldn't stop uh, triggering the video uh, which kind of sucks um, and was kind of frustrating at first because I didn't know exactly what was happening. I thought I was doing something wrong. Uh, so what I got is uh, an external uh, GPS device. One that I got is they just came out with this it, uh, a couple months ago. It's the Dual X GPS 160. Um, it is a little bit pricey. Uh, they make a they ha they have an older one that is a little bit cheaper. It's the 150, um, and the difference is is just basically the uh, refresh rate of the GPS. The 150 I think is at five hertz which is definitely a lot better than um, what the iPhone or iPad is. Uh, but this 160 right here uh, goes at 10 hertz and it's a lot more accurate. The other device that I have is a uh, uh, Plex Kiwi Wi-Fi. Basically it is a um, OBD2 plug uh, that plugs into your car and transmits the car data wirelessly to this app so you can get um, other telemetry like your throttle, your RPM, uh, what gear you're in, and other um, f uh, various things. And it, it helps with the uh, accuracy of everything as well. So as you can see on my sensor list, I have my dual X GPS GPS that is at 10 hertz. It also gives the battery life, which is pretty cool. Um, and my OBD sensor, which was the Kiwi, and that refreshes at uh, 5 hertz. To give you a quick overview of the video screen, um, top here you have all your statuses, uh, your triggers, your Wi-Fi, your signal, your camera, and any other thing. And you can also click on it just to see um, what your statuses are, your system statuses, and it gives you everything if there's anything that's not working. It'll be in red if it's working, it'll be green. Uh, on the lower yeah, on the lower left hand of the video screen, um, it will give you the track name, uh, your car, the user, and what lap you're on. Um, right here, it gives you the telemetry of uh, G-Force, so it's your G-Force meter. Uh, right to the right of that is your timer for your current track, and below that is how fast you're going. On the bottom right, it gives you basically a tachometer, uh, your throttle response, and your uh, digital RPM. And on the top right, if you have it, uh, multicam, it would give you the video if you're on an iOS device or just a little uh, blinky square if you're using a GoPro. So the things that I like about Harry's lap timer, um, the main thing is it's very cool that you can set it to automatically start and stop your laps. Um, it's nice uh, rather than having a GoPro where you have to remember to uh, press the button to start it, it will automatically start for you. Um, because when I noticed when I'm racing, I forgot multiple times to start the camera because you're just, you're, you're so focused um, about racing that you just basically forget everything else. The other things that I like on it that it has the telemetry data. Um, it has that g-force meter which is pretty cool. Um, it also has a map of the track that you've taken um, which is another cool visually thing to see where you are on the track. Um, obviously it gives you the times um, to help you become a better driver. Uh, it also has your car information if you have the um, either a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi OBD to a dongle, which is pretty cool. The other cool thing that this app 
that I don't think other apps can do natively as they multicam. Uh, which is pretty cool. You can have as many iOS devices as you want and you can have it all uh, trigger at once. So you can have uh, a camera either facing the driver or you can have one outside your car um, and it can records automatically uh, for you. Things I dislike about Harry's lap timer. Um, it can be very, very finicky to get things working right. Um, I don't know if it is the current uh, Apple iOS 7 uh, because I had iOS 6 and it seemed a little bit more stable. Uh, iOS 7, there seems to be a lot more bugs and crashing with the app. Um, I'm going to blame Apple for that. Um, I'm assuming it will get better with um, his updates. He's been pretty good at that. Uh, so I'm just hoping that it'll be a little bit more stable uh, for future releases. Uh, the one thing currently that sucks right now is any multi-cam footage recorded with the multi-cam iOS devices is that it has to use iCloud. Now when I first did this, um, there is a setting you can change so it doesn't do that. Uh, but when I first did this, uh, my first track event, I had that on and it actually used up all my data on my iPad it was transferring all those files um, after I was done with lap and I didn't realize that uh, so I learned my lesson there and I turned um, that feature off so when I get home to my Wi-Fi then I'll sync everything up so it doesn't use my data pretty finicky to get everything to work and if you're in the race mode uh, it can be difficult sometimes to remember everything um, what I found is basically when I do this, uh, I have everything shut off, my car, my iPad, my Bluetooth devices. Uh, I turn on, my ca turn on my car, turn on my uh, Kiwi Wi-Fi. Uh, I connect that uh, with the iPad after I turn that on. Then I connect with Bluetooth. Uh, then I go to Harry's Lab Timer. I do not go to any other applications when I'm using uh, Harry's Lab Timer on my iPad while I'm racing. Uh, just to eliminate any other possibilities of it crashing or whatnot. Um, then I just basically check my central list to make sure everything is connected and working right. So that is my quick uh, review of Harry's Lab Timer and my experience of it while I was rally crossing. Um, overall, it's probably it's a very feature-packed application. Um, it can be very finicky at times. Uh, some things are not uh, intuitive as I think they should be. Um, I guess overall I probably give it about a 75 to 85 percent uh, of my liking. 